Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, so I wanted to talk about some poetry of interest. I also wanted to talk about uh, poetry of Africa, which I don't highlight nearly enough on this on this channel. Um, especially with this being around the weird, I have to talk about, you know, all around the world and, and that's that type of stuff. Uh, today's poem is all about oppression and potentially ri or rising up through the oppression. Uh, I am referring to Boy by Chenjirai Hove. For those who don't know, Chenjirai Hove is a Zimbabwean uh, writer uh, who's written um, since the 1970s, 1980s. Uh, he's, um, uh, what's, what's interesting is, is, uh, sort of his experience in the world. He was born in Rhodesia, which was a, um, a, uh, the former Zimbabwe before it got its independence from Britain. Uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, it was white, like, like South, South Africa, it was white minority ruled. Uh, and in an effort to uh, hold on to their power, uh, when other other African nations were declaring their independence, Rhodesia also uh, declared its independence. But the the white powers that be did that just to make it look like they were um, uh, they they were in the right there, uh, which uh, you know the United Nations uh, effectively called them out on. Uh, and eventually, through a through a war, uh, Zimbabwe managed to get get control or the the people of Zimbabwe managed to get control of Zimbabwe and renamed it Zimbabwe uh which um Chenjirai liked uh, unfortunately a short time later Zimbabwe was taken over by autocrats including Ro Robert Mugabe uh who led until pretty much 2018 and from there uh Chenjirai uh is critical of the government uh so much so that it it it, it drew a lot of backlash from the government and the, the loyalists there uh, and so he had to live much of his life in exile um, until he died, which is unfortunate. Uh, but he was he was very well regarded in his time, especially winning a number of awards for his work. This is the first time I've encountered his work, uh, but his story does sound, ring true to um, the experience of many writers of South Africa, um, especially those who saw uh, you know pow power in their country taken by autocrats. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about Boy. I will read this poem, do a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. Boy. When, brother, will you be? How will you be? For you are not yet. A boy you are called by milk-plastered lips, and you undo your hat to bear that musty dome. Yet a boy you remain, your unpensioned thirty-year job, unpensioned even and kind, you have faithfully groomed while bosses go and come, renewing that boyishness, inheriting you and the garden. But ever boy, never man. Maybe a bigger garden will turn you to a field man. Did you tell your boss you have fathered, husbanded like him? Does he know your son lectures to professors in exile, booted on ancient buttocks by weak bone madams who rob your humility, implanting slavery and hate? even yoking you with manufactured allegiances, yet your blood left rhythm speaks when history chapters allow. And so that was Boy. In terms of analysis, there is a little bit we're talking about here. Uh, in terms of narrative, it seems to be, uh, you know, uh, an unseen narrator speaking to another person and acknowledging, you know, they're still regarded as a boy, even though they're a man. They're not treated fairly by their employer. Uh, and their uh, violence is even incited within them by people who might be manipulating them for some personal or power kind of uh, reason. Uh, so you can really get that this poem is about oppression, uh, maybe some oppression that uh, Chinjirai noted in his own country. Uh, he even says, when brother will you be? How will you be for you are not yet a boy you are called by milk plastered lips and you undo your hat to bear that musty dome, yet a boy you remain. 
indicating that the the person that the narrator is talking about is an older person. They're constantly referred to um, uh, as a boy, which is a demeaning name, often used by those in power um, to demean those they feel are inferior to them. So you you, you get it with the re repetitive use of the word boy throughout the poem, signifying that um, this person should be, they should feel and they should be addressed as though they are an equal or uh, as though they are a man. And then they say, uh, you have faithfully groomed while bosses go and come, renewing that boyishness, inheriting you in the garden, but ever boy, never man, maybe a bigger garden will turn you to a field man. Kind of indicating that, um, you know, uh, alluding to before I started that, but like uh, saying that like you've, you've worked so hard in this job, but you're unpensioned, you don't really get the respect you deserve. Uh, and bosses, they come and go, but you remain, you, you persist, and yet you're not treated with respect. And even if you work in a larger place, you'll only ever be a field man. Like you might just be working in the field, you won't ever get that cushy desk job, the the kind of job that maybe the the white individuals who administrate the place are probably getting. And then, uh, you know, telling your boss that you fathered and husband and like him, that you're on equal footing, you've experienced the same things that he has, and yet you're not getting the same treatment. And then the last verse is especially interesting because he says, booted on ancient buttocks by weak-boned madams, good alliteration there, who robbed your humility, humility implanting slavery and hate, even yoking you with manufactured allegiances. And that's interesting because it's kind of like you're, you're treated with disrespect by these people, but yet they still push you and manipulate you. They implant slavery and hate kind of uh, spreading ideas that maybe you, you don't agree with or shouldn't agree with. And like yoking you with manufactured allegiances saying, hey, you know, vote for this party or else you're not loyal to the country. Uh, go to war here or else you're, you're not loyal to this person or that person. Uh, and while, while they're saying that, they're robbing you blind, taking what, what is rightfully yours, what, is, what rightfully belongs to the people, and just exploiting everything uh, for personal gain there. Uh, and then, uh, like it says, yet your blood bloodlust rhythm speaks when history chapters allow. Uh, so indicating, you know, there will be revolution, but whether or not hi like history talks of this revolution completely depends on when history chapters allow it. So often, you know, the people in power control the narrative, I think is what that's trying to get at. So kind of inspiring a revolution, inspiring fighting back against those people who are holding power unrightfully uh, and noting how those people can control the narrative when they want, which is unfortunate. But ultimately, I do think uh, Chin Jirai, uh is kind of uh, pushing people to revolting against those who should not be holding power or, or who are autocrat types. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Boy by Chin Jirai Hove. A pretty solid poem. I especially, as I noted uh, in my analysis, I love the use of the word boy on repeat. Uh, really makes the poem flow and gets at what Chin Jirai is really talking about there. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I will put a link to this in the description so that you may read it and, you know, develop your own thoughts about it. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this poem or this poet if they don't already know. Also, I'll put a link to, uh, to the Discord in the description as well uh, so we can have further conversations about books, movies, TV, stuff like that. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and uh, revolutionary travels. Farewell.